and action. Hi, happy Monday. It's the last Monday in November of 2023. You are in the actualization zone and I am your hostess with the mostest, Dr. Robin McKay. How are you? The Americans are all back from Thanksgiving weekend and the rest of the world is back from gratitude, weekend, friends giving, all of the things that have to do with connection and with being grateful for what we have and what's to come. And so if you're here with me live, say hello so I can say hi back. And if you're watching the recording, let me know that. If you are new to this actualization zone in my community, welcome. The way that this works is that I'm a clear channel, have been since I was a little kid. I tune into the non-physical energies, to my guides, to my intuitive guidance that I receive to kind of give us a forecast, an energy forecast for the week. I call it the weather report. It's not actually the physical weather, although there's some interesting phenomena going on out in the world these days. Instead, what I look at are the non-physical energies that um, are influencing us this week as we're headed into the last month of the year of 2022. So we'll get there in just a second. I have a couple of announcements first. If you are in any of my private containers, uh, private coaching containers, it's time to get your end of the year 90 minute forecasting intensive scheduled and you're going to be receiving text messages with the scheduling link for those. If you're not in a private coaching container with me, meaning that you don't work with me one-on-one -on -one yet, but you've been curious about how to do that or if that's the right fit for you. I also am doing a small number of forecasting sessions for 2023 for those of you who are interested in moving into a larger container with me, into a private container with me. What does that look like? Well, it's 90 minutes of you and me in your Akashic Records looking at what are the themes that are going to be coming forward for the next year for, I look at four different factors, really. I look at health, wealth, love, leadership, and leadership, of course, depending on where you have differentiated, whether you're a career person and you're in a corporate position that you always see yourself being in, or if you're a business owner or entrepreneur, we look really specifically at where your gold mines are, where the possibilities for raises, salary increases, promotions are, if you're in the corporate space. And if you are an entrepreneur, we dive into the Akashic records of your business and really look at what is the essence of your brand and how can we up-level that? What is the next 50K to 100K pipeline that you have coming into your business? What's your marketing message? And we do this all in the Akashic records because I have found that that's the most powerful place to get the truth of who you are and what you're meant to be doing now and in the future. And it really allows us to hold you in your highest potential for uh, the upcoming year. So if that's something that's of interest to you, it's at a special sale price. And I'm going to be holding over that sale, I think, through at least December 1st. So DM me if you'd like more information. We've got it priced at uh, $19.97. If you're doing that um, as, a, as a separate sign up with me. And then in addition to that 90 minute session, you actually get two weeks, Monday through Friday of boxer coaching with me as well to move you through any kind of um, rebound or anything that happens after the session, meaning that sometimes you come out of a session, it feels really good. And then you wake up the next morning and you're like, oh my God, like what, what, what am I doing again? That's where the private coaching comes in on Voxer. So if that's something that you're again, interested in, I want to invite you to, to do that with me. So dr direct message me, let me know you'd like to get more information and I'll tune in and make sure that I can actually help you. And if I can, we will get that scheduled and we'll get you enrolled in that. And the other thing I want to just share is that in January of 2023, I'm hosting, oh my gosh, I haven't hosted an in-person retreat for a couple of years. I think the last time I did was 2019. So I'm doing that. And that is going to be January 27th and 28th here in Scottsdale. It's open to a very small group of people. So it's an intimate setting. Uh, probably only about eight of us, eight to 10 of us will be getting together. 
And um, I've got that specially priced as well, but I do, there is an application process for that retreat. So if that's something that you would like to learn more about, you can direct message me on that too. And I'll give you more information, but mark your calendar for that. If that pinged for you, January 27th, 28th here in Scottsdale, it's going to be a beautiful time of year to do a beginning of the year retreat. And I can't wait to host it. All right. On with the show. So this week, let me just tune in here and see what the guides want me to talk about. So this is the this is the week where the end of the year push really begins. In other words, if you are a high achiever, which I know you are, otherwise you wouldn't be in this community, you're probably doing some retrospective. You're already probably looking back at what you've accomplished this year. You're looking back at your wins for the year. You're looking back at the things that didn't go so well for the years as well. And you're probably feeling some regret or some even an end of the year press. In other words, I want to get some more things done before the end of the year. And that is perfectly normal. It's perfectly to be expected. Now, here's what I've been tuning into. We have a lot of choices when it comes to the energetics of this week and actually into the next month or two. To be honest, we always have a choice of the energetics um, when you're conscious about those. So what I've been tuning into is the consciousness stream of radiance. And I've just been asking the question, how can I emanate radiance and how can I call in radiance into my life? And if that's something that lands for you, you can do the same thing. You just have to decide. You have to make a conscious decision that you're going to become aware of radiance in your life, become aware of how you are expressing radiance, and also become aware of where you're calling radiance into your life. And this is something that's going to be very supportive as we go into the last part of the season. In the Northern Hemisphere, of course, we're coming up on the winter solstice, which is the darkest night. And that light, that radiance of the stars, the radiance of what sunlight we have during this time of year is really essential because it, it on a metaphorical level, provides hope, hope for the future. And that's the thing that we keep looking to in terms of creating a better world for ourselves and for other people is really to look at where is the hope and to as much as possible this week, avoid looking for somebody else to provide hope for you. Now, I'm not saying like, don't look to divine source, don't look to God for hope. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that hope is an inside job. And when you internalize this message of hope, when you internalize the expression of hope, that's what radiates out from you as well. So you can be a beacon of light to not just yourself, but to your family, your friends, your community, your colleagues, your coworkers, the people who you're leading. But that's a choice. See, this is the time of year and especially this year, especially this year, this is a time of year where it becomes even more important to lead yourself and to, as much as possible, step away from waiting for somebody to save you or somebody to rescue you. I'm not saying that you have to do everything all by yourself at all. In fact, it's also a really great time to link arms with somebody like me, with a coach, with a mentor, with somebody who has already walked the path that you're walking in order to assist you in ascending to the next level of your path without having to take the long way around. So the, the gestalt, the whole of this week, as we head into December of this year, the whole of this week is radiating hope, tapping in inside to see where your hope resides. Where is your hope? What are your plans for your future? You know, positive psychology did a really great job of defining even what hope is because it can be kind of this, this nebulous, kind of touchy-feely, fluffy idea. But in positive psychology, we know hope to be made up of two things. One is having, being able to see pathways to achieving your goals, to reaching for something even better than what's come before. And then the agency, that's the inner willpower, the volition in order to make your way toward that vision that you have for yourself. 
So that's the kind of hope that we're talking about this week for you as you're headed into as you're headed into the work week. Um, let's see what else do they want to say. So hope is a big one. But again, anchoring the hope into something meaningful, something meaningful. And listen, it's also I listen, I woke up this morning with kind of a post Thanksgiving hangover. I was like, no, I wasn't not from drinking, but just from like the holidays already were decorating. And I cooked all day on Sunday and I had all of this stuff going on all weekend. And Cooper, my my puppy was whew, on edge from all the Santa surprises that are out. He's very anxious about everything that's new. So we had a lot going on. I woke up this morning and I felt kind of crunchy and I felt kind of down and kind of like, oof, like it's going to be, it's kind of that energy of things aren't, things aren't light. Things are feeling a little bit down. Things are feeling a little bit gray and it didn't help that we had cloud cover this morning here in the Valley. So um, I share this because when we have those experiences where we feel like things aren't going the way that they should be going, we feel disappointed, we feel frustrated, we feel tired, we feel overwhelmed, any of those kinds of emotions, those are human emotions and they're to be expected. So I don't want you to try to cut them out because my goodness, you can't, they're not like an appendix, but you can start using these, um, these lower order emotions as invitations to deepen into something else. An invitation to deepen into hope is a good one. If you're feeling a little bit anxious or some despair or some worry or some just deject, feeling dejected, deepen into what you hope for. Deepen into what you hope for. Deepen into your intuition because that's the thing that is coming forward now. And this is for everybody who is both intelligent and intuitive. And there are a lot of us out there. A lot of people who are intuitive, are intuitive behind the scenes. They don't talk about it a lot in their work. And in fact, a lot of times, in, at least in the corporate space, I find this to be true that the intuitive ones are often the ones who are using their intuition behind the scenes. But as we're moving into this new year, one of the trends that I'm seeing is more and more that intuition is coming online to be revered and honored in the workplace as well. And so if that is something that is online for you already, it is time for you to begin acknowledging your intuition in the workplace and doing so in a way where um, just like just like any other neurological or, or physical or emotional or mental difference, this is something that is to be honored as well. Not poo-pooed, not called too woo-woo, not called too touchy-feely any longer. It's no longer appropriate for us to tolerate that criticism of, of our sacred gifts. And so I share this because um, if you are intuitive and you are in one of those spaces in tech, in healthcare, in fintech or anything like that, where intuition is sort of has, is still being sort of put down or, or there's some skepticism around it. Um, here's what, and this, this goes for everybody as well, but I'm speaking specifically to those of you who are still in the corporate space, that energy hygiene is even more important now than ever before. And so what do I mean by that? I mean by meditating every day to clear your field. I mean that you're learning things like the Akashic Records. You may be drawn to Reiki or another energy modality. Just making sure that you are creating a clear and pristine field for yourself to work in so that your inner vision is its most accurate and most pristine. And um, in so doing, you actually have more access to those higher order ideas and emotions like hope, like radiance, like creativity, like imagination. These are the things that when we're really looking at what's to come in the future, and this going back to those, those forecasting sessions that I'm doing this month, um, we really need a, a clear lens. And if your lens isn't clear, if your lens is murky and clouded by doubt, fear, skepticism, or anything else, or any kind of physical um, ailment, ailments as well, if you've been sick, if you've had any viruses or any bacterial infections or anything like that, those are things that are going to disrupt your capacity to see very clearly and to know what you know from, a, from the perspective of wisdom. So energy hygiene this week is very important as well. All right. So that's the forecast for this week. I am 
going to be back in here at least a couple more times this week. I like to do pop-ups and sometimes I don't know when my guides want me to come in. So I just wait and listen for them. And I would say that was something that you could do as well this week is really start tuning into your inner guidance, the non-physical benevolent beings who are here with you, your angels, your master teachers, your guides, and asking them for support. You're not meant to do this all, all by yourself. You're just not. And anybody who says you are, is sorely mistaken. So trust that. All right. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Robin McKay here, and I will see you on the next weather report.